users, the lifeblood of your application. You're not building your app for nobody, you're building it for somebody or lots of somebodies and those somebodies are users. So in this lesson, we're gonna talk about how we work with users in your bubble app. So if you recall, when we set up our trip data type, we saw that we had a couple of other data types that were already here. And the device data type, we're gonna ignore for now. The user data type, that's what we care about. Now, users are essential to virtually any application because without them, we can't restrict access to sensitive data to only the person who that data corresponds to. So in bubble and in app development in general, we have this concept of a user to tie what a real life human being accessing our application is able to do within the context of our application. And the first step here is signing the user up. Signing the user up is the same thing as creating that user within our database. It's creating an identity within our application that corresponds to a real life human being, a real life user of our app. And the way that we do that in Bubble, if I come over to the sign up page that we created earlier and look at our workflow that is being triggered when we hit the sign up button, the way that we do that is by adding in an action, which I'm gonna do here before navigating the user away from this sign up page. And it's under account, sign the user up. And when we sign a user up, we have to provide two things. We have to provide both an email address. And this is something that of course we want the user to give to us. So we're gonna point that to the value coming from some input on the page. So we're gonna point this predictably to input emails value. And then the password equally needs to come from an input on the page. In our case, we've got this other input here for the password, which I should label accordingly as input password. And then point this password value to input passwords value. And one thing to note here is that Bubble is handling everything to do with the security of logging in and signing up users with a password on our behalf. We're not storing the password anywhere in our database. We're not writing any logic to do with passwords or user authentication aside from using these sort of high level building blocks like signing the user up. And if you wanna learn more about how Bubble handles what we call user authentication, which is just signing up and logging in users, then you can check out the links in the description of this video to the Bubble Manual. For now, we're just gonna leave this as it is. And now I'll test this out on Bubble Go. So I'm going to hit get started and then add my email address here, add a password and hit sign up. And if we go and we look in our data tab now, you'll see that we have one user corresponding to the user who I just signed up as. And so users show up in our database just like any other data type. It's just that we create them with this special sign of the user up action. Now, one of the things to note is that once you are logged in as a user, as I am now on my phone, if I create anything in the database, so a new trip, for example, just add in some dummy data here. If I create this, if I now look in the database under all trips and I find that last trip, a trip by Matt, I just click this little pencil icon to open it up. You see here how we've got this created by field. So this has been automatically assigned to the user who is logged in on the device when that thing, in our case, a trip was created. And this is our first example of a relationship between two pieces of data, a user on the one hand and a trip on the other. Because if we look at the data tab, look at our trip data type, you'll notice that it does have this creator field, which is a type of thing user. So this is a built-in field that every data type that you create has. And why is this data relationship useful in the first place? Well, it's kind of common sense, right? If we don't associate objects in our database, like a trip or a 
bank account or a social media post or what have you with the user and the person who created them, well then how can we write logic that only allows that user to maybe view that bank account or edit that social media post? So this data relationship is the foundation of what allows us to write this kind of rule or permission-based logic, which forms the bedrock of most, if not all, of the applications that we build. And the easiest example of this is if I go to my trips page, so my list of trips here, I can add here on this search for trips a search constraint. A search constraint is just the same thing as a filter. So I'm going to filter, I'm gonna add a search constraint to only find those trips that were created by me. And so we can add a search constraint where the first thing that we add here is the field that we are evaluating. So the created by field, created by creator. Those are the same fields in Bubble. They're just called different things in different parts of the editor. So where the created by field is equal to, and then we have this marvelous, marvelous operator called current user. That is the user who is currently logged in on a particular device. So I'm gonna set that to be the current user. And now if I reload the app on Bubble Go, well, you can hit a roadblock if you're following along, which is that we're back here on the home page, even though I just signed up. And when we actually sign up, we're logged in as well automatically. So I don't wanna go through here and sign up right away. Rather, if I'm already logged in, I just want to land on my trips page. I just don't wanna land on this home page. And so we need to add one little bit of logic here that's going to redirect or open the application on a separate page if the user is already logged in. And that logic needs to live on the home page. And then remember that every workflow has a trigger event. So we were previously setting up here a button click trigger event to go to the sign up view. Well, there's lots of other trigger events that we can use, including one that lives here under general called user is logged in. So this event will fire any time that the application detects that the current user is logged in. So we can essentially use this to redirect the user when the app is open because the home page as the root view here, and you can see that because it's got this little home symbol next to it, it is the root view of the application. And by the way, you can change the root view of the application by clicking these three dots on any other view and making it the root, right? And that root is the entry point to the application. That's when you load the application, this is the view that's gonna load first. So in our case, this home view is kind of like the router of our application in a way. If the user's not logged in, then they're just gonna go through the normal flow of hitting get started or logging in. But if they are already logged in, what we wanna do is immediately redirect them off of this page. So we're gonna add an action to this workflow and that action is gonna be under navigation, go to tab, trips, right? This trips tab is in essence the entry point for logged in users. And so now if I open up the app and I relaunch it, we should see that workflow kick into gear almost immediately. And you can see here that I'm only seeing one trip here on my trips list. I could add another one. And I will see, of course, another one. And interestingly, if we go to our trips view here within the editor and I hit preview, well, notice here how I'm not viewing any trips right now. And that's because I'm not logged in on the web version here, on the web preview version. So that's how to sign up users. The other two major parts of this equation are logging in the user and logging out the user. So we'll add some log out logic here first that's gonna let us log the current user out so then we can create some other logic to test to log the user back in. So we'll start with the log out logic here. And I'm gonna have this live on our account page for the moment. We can finesse the design of this later on in the course, but for now, I'm just going to add a button here. I'll use this link light primary that just says log out. 
And the only other thing that I'll do because it's a convention habit for me is adding everything here inside of a form that I will immediately add a little bit of top margin and padding to. I just can't stand to see those buttons go across the edge of the screen. It gives me a headache, even if they do have a transparent background in this case. And this logout button, what is it gonna do? It's gonna log the user out, isn't it? Do you even need me? Do you even need me at this point to show you what to do? Have a guess, start to see, what would you do from here? Add an action. We can just search for it. It's got a really unconventional, confusing name. Log the user out. It, by the way, lives here under account. So it's not hard to find. And what does it do? It logs the user out. That's literally all it does. But once we've logged the user out, this is not quite so intuitive, then what? Well, let's see. I'm gonna go to my account page. I'm gonna hit log out. And then what? Well, nothing. We just logged the user out, but we didn't do anything else. I could go to the trips page and predictably, I can't see anything here because I'm not logged in. So I can't view any of the trips created by any logged in users, including any of the trips that I just created as a human being while logged in as another user. So we wanna have something else happen here, right? We probably want to take the user out of this kind of main app section of trips and account whenever they log out. And so what we can do here after this log the user out is just navigate the user by going go to view. And we actually want this to be in a stack. I'm gonna send the user to the home view. However, we don't want them to be able to go back through the stack to the account page. So what we do is we actually tick this, reset the navigation stack. So that's the equivalent, if you remember our stack of views before, as if I'm on view A and I open view B in a stack, and let's say I open view C in a stack, but with view C, I tick reset the navigation stack. What happens at that point when I add this card to the view is I get rid of the ones behind. So now there's nothing for me to go back to. Now, once I've reloaded the app here on Bubble Go, for me to test this out, I'm gonna be back on the home page, predictably, and because I'm not logged in anymore, I'm not being redirected. So I'm gonna have to log in here as another user in order to test this. And what you can always do is add a little plus sign after the first part in your email address you could say something like map plus test and then just add the rest of your email address and that little segment there will allow you to do two things it'll show up as a unique email address so this is a unique email address that i can use i couldn't sign up here as exactly the same user because i would get an error when i try to sign up All right i'll get a native alert error here but if i use that little trick with the plus symbol and then some text and then sign up. Well, this is a unique address now within our bubble database. This is, a this is a unique user. However, for the purposes of sending email, that plus test will essentially be removed. So all the emails will still go to the original email address, matt at thinkitbuildit.co. And it doesn't have to be plus test, by the way, this could be any arbitrary value whatsoever. What I often do is just give like the abbreviated date or something like that. So at any rate, we are logged in here as that new user. When I hit log out, I should be, and I am taken back to the home view. And I'm not able here, if I try to swipe backwards, I'm not able to go back. If I didn't do that, let's say I don't have reset navigation stack turned on and after sign up again, I try to log out, I'll be redirected to the home page, but I can use this. I'm literally just swiping here with my finger to go back, which obviously doesn't make any sense in the context 
of being logged out. I shouldn't be able to get back to these views, these tabs in the app. So we do wanna make sure that we have Reset Navigation Stack turned on. And also while we're here, we can just improve the user experience of our sign up form just a touch by adding a new workflow, which is gonna save our users a step and therefore have them like us more. And that workflow is based on an event, which is page is loaded, but you can just think of this as view is loaded because we're on mobile, not web. And all we're gonna do after this is we're gonna use an action which lives under element actions and it is called set focus to an input element. And we're gonna set the focus here to input email. And what that is gonna mean is that when we open up our sign up page here, that the user doesn't have to separately click on this email field, right? It's just automatically focused, i.e. selected, so they can just immediately start typing. Now, the last thing here is to add some log in logic. And I wanna show you here a way of creating a view that's very similar to a view that you already have. So if I jump into the app manager section over here, and I just hit these three dots on my sign up view, I have this option to duplicate. So I'm just gonna duplicate this, literally just duplicate it as the login view and just change all of the details here. And there isn't many of them, just this top app bar title and this button label and then the workflow. So instead of signing the user up here, we can remove this action and instead we can log the user in and we're just gonna do the same thing as for the sign up action. We are going to assign this input value to input email and we're gonna assign the password value to input password. And then as a last step as before, we're gonna navigate the user to the trips tab. And then to get to this login view, we need to update the navigation logic from our home view. And so I've got this group down the bottom here, group B, which has a button to log the user in, as well as this text already have an account. We may as well make this whole group clickable. We don't need to arbitrarily make the user click on this last little part here. If they click anywhere here, we should assume that they're trying to log in. So we'll call this group login and we'll add a workflow which navigates the user via stack navigation to that login view. And we don't wanna reset the navigation stack because they may click this button by mistake and need to go back to home in order to, to go back to sign up. And so what I can do is hit this login button. Obviously I'm going to log in. We've got a nice little focus event appearing as well. Add in my same password as before. Voila, I'm logged in and you can see there are my two beautiful trips. And then the other way that we could tell who we're logged in as is just adding some text on the account page that just says, hey, you're logged in as X user. So let's just add that to the top of our group form. Just some text that literally just says logged in as, and then what we can do is we can add some dynamic data into here which actually grabs the current user as the data source. And from the current user, we can actually unpack a few things like we can for any other data type, including the email. And then let's actually fit this button to content as well. So everything here is left aligned. And when I reload this, I'll be redirected because I'm logged in. And then on the account page, you can see that I am logged in as this particular user. And I can hit log out to be taken back to that home view. So that's users. In the next lesson, we're gonna expand our understanding about conditional statements to create this kind of empty state group that appears only when the user hasn't created any trips. I'll see you there.